This is the page that you will see when you sign into Zoom on a browser. This page allows you to look at all the upcoming meetings that you have available right now to you and also allows you to schedule a new meeting. If you want to access this page um, and you've been looking somewhere else on your Zoom account, the way that you can get to it is by looking at the um, menu on the left hand side. Underneath personal you'll see meetings, click on that and then the, all your upcoming meetings will appear. If you notice here, a lot of our meetings are actually recurring. They don't have a fixed start time. And the reason why we do that is so that we can um, pull the meeting ID or the, or the meeting link whenever we want. Um, so that's regular meetings or even meetings that are quite ad hoc. Um, so that's really useful to know um, for learners, classes, and also for meetings with colleagues. So how do we schedule a new meeting? Well, pop click on that uh, big blue button there and we can schedule a new meeting. Okay, we've got quite a few options down here, but I'm just gonna point out a few little things and then you can have a little play with this yourself. So uh, the first thing is obviously the topic of the meeting and you've got to make sure that you're really specific there uh, because the topic of the meeting will ensure that whoever clicks that link, so if a learner clicks that link, they know that they're in the right place. Um, so if you just put, class um that's that's a bit vague so try and be um as focused as possible and then you know that your learners will be confident that they've clicked the correct link so i'm going to pop something on there okay all right so um that's the topic of my um my meeting so um and bear in mind if this is for example if this um is the same if this this class is also on a thursday morning then i'd probably put and thursday morning there as well because it will be a lot easier for the learners if the one class has the same link so if it's the same group of learners then just give them one link um if they've got a link for monday and a link for thursday and then a different link the next week it can get quite confusing for them um so they'll have lots of different links to deal with and they might click on the wrong things and then you'll be dealing at the beginning of your session with um, just dealing with a lot of those issues so it's a lot easier to just give them one link. Um, to ensure good security though um, if we go down there where it says security I would suggest putting a waiting room on. Now from the end of September 2020 uh, Zoom has said that everyone needs to have either a passcode or a waiting room enabled on all of their meetings for security reasons because they're up in their security. Um, I would suggest a waiting room rather than a passcode for two reasons. One is a passcode is another bit of information that your learners have to remember um, and uh, and the waiting room I think is a better option because it comes up with um, their name if they've submitted it when they've signed in um, so that you know um, who's coming in and it also helps you do the register as well um, and folks can stay in the waiting room for a little bit and you can send them a message if you'd like them to do a little bit of a um, starter activity or something just to get them going before you actually start the session um, that kind of thing so you can ask them to wait in the waiting room. Bear in mind that the waiting room is just a holding page. It isn't somewhere where they can all talk with each other yet. It's just somewhere where they know they've logged on and they're just waiting for you to um, let them open the room. Imagine it as being a real room. So you know that they've knocked on the door and you're just asking them to wait for a little moment outside. Okay, so um, here we've also got our time. So we can change the date, we can change the time, we can change the duration. Uh, the, a little note on the duration there is that even if you put an hour, it doesn't mean that your meeting is going to cut off after one hour. Don't worry about that. It won't. That's just approximate. And that's really just for your own scheduling so that when you look at the meetings list, you can see things don't overlap and things. This is the function that I was talking about earlier, the recurring meeting. So if you click on that recurring meeting button, it allows you to um, suggest whether you want it daily, weekly or monthly, or that's no fixed time. So that's great. That allows you to pull an ad hoc meeting if needed. And then um, you can do it so that it stops after however many occurrences. So if you've got a course that lasts six weeks, then you could put six there and it will stop automatically, which is fantastic. 
All right, a little bit further down, the last thing I'm going to point out for you is here um, where the video is. It's really good to actually just put off on both there, I would suggest. And that means that um, the um, videos don't start straight away. Your video doesn't start straight away and participant video doesn't start straight away. So that means that um, everyone that enters that room has to manually put their camera on. And that's a lot better than it just coming on straight away. And um, if people aren't prepared, things like that. That takes a little few moments at the beginning of a session to tell people and do a little orientation and let them know how they can actually switch the camera on. But that's a little bit better than it just being straight on straight away um, without any warning. Okay, so let's go on down and now we can just click save. And there we have it. There's our meeting. Fantastic. You can add it to your calendar, which is a really great function if you use Google Calendar and things like that. I'd highly recommend it, um, especially if you are entering a world where you're going to be doing a lot of things remotely and online. Um, I do everything through Google Calendar and I totally recommend that um, because it can get quite confusing and you don't want to accidentally um, schedule two things at once or uh, at the end kind of thing. All right, so the thing that we need on this page is actually this invite link. Um, so if we click copy invitation, okay, and you've got your invitation there, okay, this is your um, link that you will share with people. All right, so it's Monday I am. I'm ready for my class. I've given my link out to all my learners and I'm sitting here waiting for my learners to join the room. Um, and then, uh -huh. can you hear that doorbell? That's the doorbell. Um, someone's knocking on the room and uh, on the door, and they're waiting in the rating room. The way that I can see who those folks are is by clicking that button down there. See the waiting room, and there they are. Um, I can see the people that are in the meeting right now. It's just me, and then I can see two people waiting in the waiting room. If I want to send a message to them, I can click that message button, I can choose to admit them all, or I can admit them individually. The reason why I might want to just admit some learners and not others is perhaps, um, first of all, for security reasons, because you might see some someone and you don't know who they are, so you don't want to admit them. Secondly, is that you might want to admit some learners over others to start with so that you can orientate some learners on Zoom if some learners haven't used it before. But if you do that, make sure that you send a message out um, to the other learners that are waiting in the waiting room just to let them know that you are you are there and you're ready. Um, another way of doing this, if you feel more comfortable, um, is just let everybody in. So you admit all of your learners in, you say hello, and then you might want to separate some of the learners that are already okay with Zoom or already okay with the task that you're doing um, and you might want to pop them into a breakout room so they can do um, a separate task just whilst you're speaking to other learners. There are two ways that you can create a register when you're in a meeting or a class. First of all you could get the participants list and screenshot it and then have a little look at it later and action it later on after the meeting. Um, that's nice and quick and easy to do that. However, sometimes people's Wi-Fi uh, comes in and out and things like that. And you don't know if you've got quite a big meeting where the people have left. Um, so, uh, and also a nice way to do it after the event is going in your back end. So um, again, back end by that, I mean, um, looking at your account on a browser which is what we're doing right now on our account if you go to the admin section click on account management and then scroll on down to reports you'll get to this page here next if you click on active hosts you can see all of the um, events and all of the webinars that we had open um, yesterday from the 13th to the 14th. So you can change the date there. Um, bear in mind the maximum report duration is a month. You can export as a CSV file and you can export as well. So you've got the name of your class there, you've got your meeting ID, you've got the start and end time, your duration, and then you've got your participants here. I'm going to click on the session that I did yesterday 
um, just to show you. Um, the reason why I'm showing you this is because even though there was only three participants, you can see when people came in and out of the room. So you can see when they joined, when they left, and then also how long they were in your class for. And then you can easily just click the big blue button, which will export and create, um, pop it all into a spreadsheet for you.